two together. O U right. in the house. O G from O U. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So guys, we are very, very excited. As I mentioned to you, I'm gonna let him tell you all about who he is and what he does. I will just tell you this. I was scrolling through my um, Instagram feed mm -hmm. and I don't know, maybe I heard about you, read about through somebody else. There's this cardiologist who's, who's a plant-based doctor who believes in healing people through diet and food. That's right. And I thought that was so perfect. And then I scrolled through his page and I saw here it is, a doctor, a surgeon, right? Uh, no, nah, I don't want to offend the surgeons. I'm okay, going to all right. Cardiologists. Okay. Yeah. In scrubs, and he is in the lab. Well, it was a cat lab. You can tell me all about it, but he was cooking, y'all. He was cooking, and I was like, this is what the world needs. They need to hear this, because when I go to the doctor, my doctor is not trying to tell me really. Yeah how to make a meal. <laughs> all right, go ahead. All right, so the real deal is, oh, you're the bum. I gotta give you this. Oh, thank all right, you. so help me hard doc. We're gonna bring it up here, get yes. you going. So I'm Columbus Batiste, I'm one of the interventional cardiologists out in SoCal, and there is only one type of doc. That's a doc who knows how to blend nutrition wow. with uh, standard medicine. That's the goal. So wow. that's what we're looking to go ahead and do. But I'm gonna tell you one thing. Mm -hmm. You're really the key. Oh. Because everything starts and stops with the mothers, wow. with the women in our lives, right? That's true. So what you're doing right now for transforming lives of your kids wow. and your husband and everyone else that you touch, that's really where the true work is being done right wow. now. So it's an honor to be here with you. Oh, Absolutely. thank Absolutely. you. That makes Absolutely. me feel so good. Yeah. That makes me feel, you know, it's true though. I guess we do have hold a lot of you do. health and pop, yeah, in our hands, women, because we're in the kitchen. We're making people. We have the power of kind of life and death in our in our hands when Absolutely. we make the wrong foods to eat. So I want you to tell us all about like how did you turn? How long have you been plant based? Yeah. So I've been deep into plant based for about ten years. Wow. So after I had a tragedy with my dad passing away, my wife's dad passing away, and so right then I just got heavily in, in, enriched inside the research. Mm -hmm. And I was looking, what was that thing that was left? What was that missing link that was there? And I realized that it started and stopped with food. Wow. Our food is what's causing a lot of our diseases and our food is what can get us out of that ditch. Wow. Right? And so that was really the key. And so since then, I just had to go and take it to another level. And so in my local site, I do lectures, I do cooking classes. I call it the cath lab. Just real briefly, the cath lab is a place where I bring patients who are having heart attacks to stop a heart attack. Wow. I bring patients who are having chest pain to stop that chest pain from happening. Typically, they put stents in. Wow. So I named this cath lab mm -hmm. Cooking Alternative to Health because it's the same place, the kitchen, wow. where we can stop heart attacks from happening in the future. Wow. We can stop and change disease processes right now through the foods we eat. Woo! All the things we love. So let's get at it. Let's get at it. <laughs> now I'm a little bit afraid because um, there is a big difference, I think, between being vegan and plant-based. Absolutely. And I am guilty of not, I say like, and then you said the same thing too, baby steps. So I don't want everybody to be overwhelmed. If you're just trying to live and um, do things, no, you don't have to do everything at one time. Baby steps is the key. And I'm saying this because I'm guilty of not doing everything that would cause to be like, you know, yeah, nutritious. It's like running a marathon, yeah. right? I mean, you're not going to run 26.2 miles the first day. You're going to start off by maybe running one mile. Yes. Then five, then yes. ten, then yes. twenty. But the goal is you're trying to work yourself up to twenty six point two. Right. So you never lose sight of your goal. Mm -hmm. And that goal is to make yourself ideal from a nutritional standpoint. So you can wow. prove it. Out. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Are y'all with us? Let's do this. Let's do this. So the first thing that I want to do, uh, just maybe a couple of days ago, I posted a video. A lot of you are making your meals, and if you are trying to do something vegan, or if you have somebody vegan coming or somebody with food allergies, you're not sure, we have three kind of simple things that we're going to show you. Some fun stuff and easy. The first thing that I have here going that I've already started with, and the recipes will be available after this is all over. I promise you guys that I'm going to post them so you will have them. Um, this is fresh cranberry sauce. You know what I really hate? I hate the ones that's in a can. Yeah, yeah. It just comes out in a glob. I mean, no disrespect. Some people don't know how to make it. It's easy. So I went and got some fresh organic cranberries from Costco. Nice. Costco has been my friend with organic stuff if you want to buy it in bulk and save money. So I bought some cranberries here and we have some orange juice. 
I put a little bit of vanilla. Okay. And agave for a sweetener. Now if Very good. if I think he probably would not use agave. He's being <laughs> nice <laughs> to me. <laughs> Well, listen, it, it's all about steps, right? So the first key thing is getting rid of the cans because those cans contain BPA, and that BPA, this this product that causes your endocrine system to go out of whack, your hormones, wow. that can lead to other ailments with you, allergies and adverse wow. events down the road. So you want to stay away from those things. So that's huge that you even started off with just a fresh. Good. So we're on the right track. That's right. All we're right. <laughs> Okay, so we put some fresh, so we have fresh cranberries, simple, maybe how many ingredients? Fresh cranberries, I put some orange zest, I use orange juice, you can use freshly squeezed orange juice, or you can use the regular orange juice if you don't have time, which is what I did. Um, I use vanilla and agave, so that was like, what, five ingredients? You put it on to boil, and I'm going to show you what this looks like, and we just did this in a few minutes. And it is beautiful and it tastes beautiful. It tastes really, really fresh and amazing. So I did this one first because it's gonna be a dual part to our meal and our presentation today. So guys, if you're making the stuff out of the can, small step, do this instead. That's huge. Yeah, right? And you can even throw it on top of your pancakes oh. or your waffles. And so now instead of using like your syrup and everything, now you have something natural that's there. Yes, so if it. you were making this, and what would you use instead of agave? So to be honest, I probably wouldn't use any, any, any right? Sweetener? So I'm, I'm going to probably mix the, the fruit. Mm -hmm. So in that way, I get a little bit more sweetness from like cherries maybe with it too, as well mm -hmm. as the cranberry. It brings some natural sweetness out of it. Now that's a right? good idea. So maybe that'll be my next time. Next year, I'll make that one with more natural sugars instead of the agave. All right, so I'm going to move on from that. And I'm going to show you guys something that we had, I did last week. Um, I was saying like to have a vegetable if you want to make something that is vegan and everybody can eat this even if you're not vegan. Yeah. This is our friend the cabbage. Love, love, <laughs> can you tell us what cabbage is good for? I'm going to tell you. The one of the key things when you look at cabbage, you look at kale, you look at any of these things is you're looking at fiber first and foremost. Mm. So fiber lowers the blood pressure. Fiber helps your digestive system. Wow. It helps reduce cancer too as well. Mm -hmm. Fiber is huge wow. and beneficial for you. It lowers your cholesterol. One other thing too as well, when we get into these types of vegetables, one of the things these cruciferous and these non-cruciferous vegetables, green leafies, is it helps overall your cardiovascular system. Mm -hmm. Helps improve your heart health. So wow. hugely beneficial. Now, Dr. Batiste was telling me something about um, he does an oil-free diet so maybe he aims to eat without oil which is i think amazing yeah. and it's something that we can all aim to but today i didn't i'm guilty <laughs> that's all right use an oil so i'll tell you but it's something to be conscious and aware of can you tell them about that because i'm yeah. i'm soaking up everything today okay. every little bit so of listen, info. my folks are from new orleans yeah, me right? too we always yes all right, all right. So, so new orleans so when, when, no, my mom, when my mom cooks my sister cooks years ago they would cook by ear Right? Yes. You know what I mean by cooking by ear, yes. right? You're not measuring yes. out stuff. You yes. just want to you sprinkle you a little bit in here and keep going at it, exactly. right? <laughs> the problem is, is that when you start just dumping the oil in there, mm. all of a sudden that one tablespoon of oil is 125 calories. Ooh. One tablespoon is a half an ounce. Wow. So that means one ounce is 250 calories of pure fat. Wow. And you wonder why some folks are saying, I don't know why I can't lose weight. just the last two I you know, and so you don't have to do that. When you're making your brew, when you're cooking, you can use vegetable broth, mm -hmm. you can use water, you can all use all sorts of things that can help the saute yeah. effect. So it's good. Okay, so guys, I'm guilty of that, but next time I'm going <laughs> to do that. But this, so I'm going to ask Dr. Batiste to use his muscle because... Um, I told you I wasn't um, a surgeon, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I forgot. So we're going to cut the bottom off of it and then we'll cut it in half. Because the aim of it is just to make it look like a, and we'll take those top leaves off of it. See how easy he did that? I was in here like, oh, well, now that you say that, I'm getting stuck. Going crazy. <laughs> yeah, so you just want to have two halves like that. And then um, what I did when y'all were asking me how I made it look like that, I'm not going to do it today. And you can do it if you want to. There is an injectable butter by Tony. Chacherets, I always say this wrong. I called them and asked them, how do you pronounce this? I'm from New Orleans. I know this is from New Orleans. How do you say this? And they were like, uh, yeah, that's right. That's how you say it. I still say it wrong. So anyways, it, it is vegan. 
uh, in case you're wondering, but you can make your own. And I would suggest, since you just enlightened us all, you can use a vegetable broth yes. or make your own and stick it in here if you want. It's going to be hard because this thing is not skin or, you know, but I took this and I injected it on one to, like I try to just go all around it so I could get in the creases and the crevices as my friend Jane Rose would say um, to get all you know the seasoning through the whole yeah. cabbage and then um, I did some other bad things to it I put some I put some olive oil and other <laughs> seasonings on top and then I put it in the oven and I roasted it and I'll show you should we do TV magic let's do it all let's right. do it TV magic Show you what it turns out like. It's beautiful. And it cuts like a turkey. It's very that does pretty. Smell good. Smells good. I put some fresh herbs underneath it um, just to try and. But see, here's, get all the, here's, here's the thing the stuff that smells so wonderful about this. All, the, all herbs, the herbs, all the herbs are the thing that come out. They speak to you. They smell. Yes. It gets your mouth watering. And what what you're doing right now, even by cooking, you realize that when you cook like this, what you're doing is you're burning energy. There's something True. called heat, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Hey. It gets your body going, and the, the the whole digestive system starts immediately as soon as you're cooking. I mean, right now my mouth is watering, my stomach is starting to growl, just smelling the good stuff. Preach, preacher. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so guys, I um I left one thing out of this because I was using so many vegetables, but you can to make this really look pretty. I took some other um I took some potatoes and I just roasted them. I put like fresh rosemary on it and I did do some oil but now I know you don't need all of that oil and I will definitely aim to use less of it because I complain about not losing baby weight <laughs> and it's probably the oil because I exercise every day but it is probably all the oil that I use even in making my vegetables so guys this season you heard it right here from the mouth of a cardiologist use less oil and make steps toward kind of eliminating it well, you know, and that's the key thing is just being aware. Yes. You know, whenever we go into the holidays, one of the things I always like to, to tell folks to remember are four A's, right? You remember okay. to get your water in, aqua mm. for water. I'm from West Coast, so, you know, okay. we got to use a little bit of uh, Spanish. Yes. Things, right? So, <laughs> aqua, we want to be aware of that mindfulness. So, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. be mindful of the amount of oil that you're using. Mm -hmm. Measure it out at least if you're going that road, that road, that road right? You want to as well make sure you maintain your activity. Be active. Get active on a regular basis too as well. Those things are extremely important when this whole process of trying to improve your health and be aware. Yes. Even at Thanksgiving. Don't yes. let it all go for Thanksgiving. It's That's not right. worth it. Now, I forgot to put something colorful. When, when I make stuff, I like, you eat with your eyes. Yes. So the color would have mattered a lot here, but I roasted the potatoes and forgot to put the carrots That's and right. some other colorful things in here. But look how pretty that turns out. I'm that just going to chop up. I'm gonna put these in here just so you can see. This is butternut squash, but it'll look better. They're not cooked, just so you can see what your centerpiece could look like. It don't have to be a centerpiece if you still eat turkey. Ain't nobody judging you. I mean, just make, the, eat listen, <laughs> make the turkey the side piece. Right. Make your sides the centerpiece. Hey. That's, the, that's one of the goals. Oh God, right? that's, that's a, so that's good. A, that's an easy, simple goal for this this Thanksgiving day. I right? love that. Yeah. That is a really good thing. Can you say that again? <laughs> you gotta make your sides your center and your center your sides. Whoa! That's the key right there. That's awesome. That's, that's is, how you should shop too, right? At the grocery store. Absolutely. Ah! Absolutely. I'm saying, right? The one and only time you can have a side piece. Ah! The side piece be, be your center piece. That's Amen. one time, right? Amen. That's the one <laughs> time. That is such a good thing, guys, because that means you're getting more vegetables Absolutely. and more fresh things. All right, so we got this, and um, beautiful. that's beautiful, and that is done. And the other thing that I wanted to show you guys to make is a soup. My sister has a mm. soup company in um, Hunt, uh, Nashville, and it's called That Soup, soup Chick. Shout out to Karima. Woo! All right. Um, and so she taught me how to make this butternut squash soup, and now I have herbs all over my hands. We'll wash them. Hold on. You know, that's, I love it, I love it, I love it. Soup, so easy way to get food into your kids, right? Yes. Soups, smoothies, and salads. The three S's, that's the key right there. So this is one great way right here is getting in the soups. Soups. 
Okay, guys, so this butternut squash soup, I told you I really like, um, <laughs> I like Costco because they always have fresh, yeah, and it's organic. So, um, unless you want to just buy the butternut squash and cut it up, you can. I took one container of this, and I'm just going to tell the ingredients because I know our attention spans are not that long, and that's why I did some TV magic here, and I'm going to warm this butternut squash soup up. But what's in it, Dr. Batiz, and you can tell me. All right. Okay. We have butternut squash. You want to take, but you can roast this. Would you recommend roasting or boiling it? You know, I think either way is fine for the purposes of the soup. You yeah. know, I mean, obviously, I mean, from a culinary standpoint, you can speak to that. Which one's going to give you a slightly different flavor, flavor. right? Yeah. And yeah. what flavor you're going for. Yes. But, you know, when you heat it, that's, you know, yeah, you lose some stuff. But the overall goodness, it's all, it's all there. there. It's all there. So this took us um, probably about, I'd say, 15 minutes to make. So I... Cut it all up, you have butternut squash soup. If you have a container like this one, you want to use an entire red bell pepper. One red bell pepper. I put three cloves of garlic and I, for more color, I use, and to sneak more veggies in. Love it. I put three carrots. Thanks, Karima. <laughs> <laughs> we put more carrots in. Oh, so we want to give a shout out to these people that are watching my sister Red's Kitchen Sink who, by the way, sells the greatest high blood pressure uh, supplement. Oh, wow. So right. I have to, I have to, I need to give him some so he can see if it's cardiologist approved. I'm, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Shout out to my sister Dion at Red's Kitchen Sink. Um, it's called Pressure Be Gone. It's on Amazon, everywhere. Shout out to Alicia Holmes, Sean Moretta, Kyra, Yvette. I see y'all. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for um, spending time with us. Uh, so what else was I saying? So you got your, you got your red bell pepper. Mm -hmm. You have your three cloves of garlic, which are huge. They're from the Allen family. Yes. So your yes. onions, your garlic, those are all extremely beneficial. They almost act like an antiplatelet, same as aspirin, to help prevent cardiovascular events. So hugely beneficial. Wow. So I love when you get the garlic in there, the onions. So That's we got a whole onion in here, oh. a whole sweet onion. Nice. You got three garlic cloves. You got three carrots and a bell pepper and the reason why i chose um butternut squash is because i read that it's really good for high blood pressure mm -hmm. because of the high potassium in the mm -hmm. is that correct that's correct all these veggies high in potassium high potassium foods are extremely beneficial for blood pressure mm -hmm. right and that's one of the things that plagues many in the united states especially people of color wow it's huge wow yeah. um so if you guys have any questions that you want to ask, start asking them now because we have someone who is very knowledgeable in the kitchen today. And this is, I'll start with my own questions. All right, fine. So I have high blood pressure. Okay. And I've told you guys this before. And I work out almost every day. Mm -hmm. I, um, I don't know if I'm, I may still be overweight even though I work out every day. <laughs> well, you, look, you look fine. Um, I'm trying to think of, it runs in my family. Mm -hmm. And they prescribe medication for me to take. Okay. And I still cannot get my blood pressure to. I, I'm not okay with taking blood pressure. I feel like I'm medicine. I feel like I am too young for it. Okay. So I've been doing some things to try and change my diet and change my lifestyle because even though I'm vegan for mm -hmm. like two years now, I feel like I have fallen into a slump of maybe using too many processed foods. Mm -hmm. So what can I do? to get better and what advice would you give me and i know you can't see all of yeah, you know yeah. what yeah. i need but what because i know there are a million people out there just like me so the first thing i would tell you is salt and sodium okay being very aware of that mm -hmm. because people of african descent and many it extends beyond have a salt sensitivity gene and what that means is just a small amount of sodium you know let me ask you a question how okay. many how many milligrams of sodium are inside one teaspoon of salt a lot. I don't know. Maybe I like, like, that. I like um, that. <laughs> Is it maybe 250? 2,000. 2,000? 2,000 in one teaspoon. In one teaspoon? One teaspoon. So imagine when you're cooking by ear and just like bop, 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 and all of a sudden how much you're getting in there, right? Then you go afterwards and you sprinkle it on top of your food. Oh my gosh, y'all. Right? So when we look at that, that whole two issue thousand, of salt. 2,000? Are you sure? Thing, oh, absolutely. Oh, Fact check me. Fact check me, CNN. Oh, So here's the thing, right? So that's number one. We can back off the salt, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two is just like you mentioned. There's potassium and butternut squash, but there's potassium 
in all of the veggies. Okay. So you want to increase your vegetable content. Okay. You want to decrease that animal product. Okay. Now here's the thing, right? I'm not going to throw a little bit of shade on like the, the, the vegan meats or whatever else like yeah. that, but look at the ingredients. You have to read. If, you, if your kids, who's, how young is your youngest child? Six. Six. If they can't pronounce every single ingredient on that label, then you shouldn't should be eating eat it. it. You shouldn't be eating it. That's just straight up. Right? That's number one. So you want everything as far as that can is easily fixable inside your, your kitchen, number one. Mm -hmm. That's the key thing. Load up on the beans, load up on the whole grains, the fiber, like you mentioned. Yeah. Extremely beneficial for lowering blood pressure. Hibiscus tea, we talked about yes. that. Hugely beneficial yes. there too as well. Having moments for mindfulness. Mm. That you go into a period of where you actually rest and you get some prayer or meditation becomes extremely wow. important. Getting your sleep. Seven to nine hours, you don't get your sleep. Guess what happens? Ooh. Stress hormones go up. Wow. Stress hormones go up. Guess wow. what happens? Blood pressure is elevated. Blood sugar is higher. Risk of events goes up higher wow. for cardiovascular events. So it's a total package. It's not mm. just the food, yeah. but it's the food plus everything else that's added. So yeah. Just make it happen, right? Y'all. Okay, so we got a question. Yeah. What is a browning alternative to egg washes, oils, and maple syrup? And this is by Dion. I think a good browning alternative to it is the um, aquafaba. Mm -hmm. So, and it really does work. I've seen so many videos and I've tried it myself. So it's, it, it's a great thing that it's just, if you can use it from the can, I know you said the can is not good, but you can use it, that's where I usually get it from. Or if you make your own garbanzo beans, so the aquafaba typically comes off of the chickpeas. Correct. So that's a good one and I hope that answered your question. Yeah. Does anybody else have a question? You want to get your questions in because our team is working hard to answer <laughs> them and make sure we see them. You know, I'm going to clarify. So with, with the Hi, cans, Trisha. <laughs> Sorry. You got, you got to look out too as well for BPA-free cans. That's all you have to do. It's just okay. funnel labels you want for BPA-free, okay. then that's going to be better for you. Okay. That's going to be great. That's awesome. Yeah. So I think we have the soup that is... So guys, we mentioned what we did. I put all of those things in a pot and I put a little bit of garlic powder, onion powder, and now I'm going to be careful with my salt. <laughs> I think I was wishfully thinking that it was 200. You know what? And I left in the car, but I brought you actually a sample of the seasoning. Did you salt. really? Oh, I love that. that. Phenomenal. Yes, like so a salt free one. Yeah, and so I, first of all, I don't own any stock in the company. There's nothing like that <laughs> going on. I wish I did. Yes. But it's called Benson Seasonings. And it's And they make a Cajun one. They make oh. a whole bunch of different ones that are there for beans. They make it for poultry. They make it for awesome. a whole bunch of different things. So yes. Definitely look at that. So, guys, what I. I'll let Columbus yeah. answer that one. So here's the thing about blood pressure. Blood pressure is a silent, silent killer. Just like all these things, diabetes, blood pressure are all silent. So what are the effects of, of blood pressure long term? Right? It can lead to, think of it like this. Imagine if I were to blow up a balloon that just kind of stays really enlarged up there. Right? That pressure and that size that happens from the, the, the pressure in your vessels increasing, that's going to just scrape up the grass on your lawn. Oh. That's what happens in your vessels. Now, as a result of that, your kidneys can become affected. Your likelihood for stroke, your heart is just a simple muscle, so I'm not the smartest guy in the world. Mm -hmm. I, I just work on the heart. <laughs> and so the heart is a simple pump, and so it's a muscle. So the muscle gets thick, and just like if I was lifting weights, eventually those weights I, are gonna get too heavy mm -hmm. if I don't get rest. And now all of a sudden, I get weak. Mm -hmm. So your heart muscle starts off thick, then it becomes weak and you develop heart failure. Wow. So all those things are silent, yeah. and we know, unfortunately, in people of African descent, the amount of elevated blood pressure is sky high. Yeah. The amount of events that happen as a result of strokes, heart attacks, kidney failure, blindness are just exponentially elevated. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I hope that answered your question, and that, man, it's really eye-opening, but this is so amazing to do this in a time a timely manner because a lot of us lose it during the holidays yes. and think it's okay to just let it go yeah. and eat everything in our sight and all of the I would just what what would you how would you tell people to go forward like if they're just today for the first time hearing this message what can they do at Thanksgiving this year that might be make a difference I love it first thing I would tell you to do is start off with a large salad before each meal just keep it simple, large salad. Now, I'm not talking about ranch soup with a piece of lettuce <laughs> or a thousand island soup. I'm talking about a real salad, okay. right? 
you got to have that first. The other thing I'm going to tell you to do is try and get like your water in. Get water before you have whatever the drink or whatever it is that you typically like. Get water. Drink your water first. It, infuse it with berries, infuse it with mint, infuse it with whatever you got to do. What's the other thing that I, I tell folks to do is to get your fruit in. So before you have that dessert, get your fruit. And I'm not talking about the fruit inside of a peach cobbler. <laughs> I'm not talking about the fruit inside. I'm talking about get just the whole fruit first okay. is one of the things. Like an and apple so, or orange. But here's the key. Okay. Avoid the what the heck moment. Mm. Don't sit there and say, oh man, I had that piece of German chocolate cake. I had that piece of pound. I'm just going to wait and start until January 1st. Don't, don't, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait until Monday to start. Don't do that. All Just right. say, you know what, I'm going to go next meal, I'm going I'm to power up. Yes. I'm going to load myself with the veggies first, then I'm going to have the other things if I'm not quite ready to make that full transition yet. That's, that's the key. That's awesome advice. That's not overwhelming. So we have some more um, questions. Dr. Batiste from Adair, what is your favorite Thanksgiving staple. <laughs> ah. You know what? I love the sides. I'm, you know, I'm a little traditional. I love greens, mm -hmm. collard greens, the mixture of greens that are there. I love like a, a wild rice pilaf mm -hmm. mixed up together. I love like variations of lentils and so forth. Yes. Um, and then I kind of my tastes have shifted over the years. Mm -hmm. I used to love all the stuff everyone else loved, right. but but they've shifted now. So I love that stuff. Mm -hmm. What I love most about Thanksgiving, I'm gonna be honest with you. Family. Yeah. Right? That's really what it's about. It's it about is. family and creating memories is what it's about. It is. Yeah. And that, that, you know, that is a really good piece of advice for my kids. You know, I do this show because my kids all have food allergies mm. to egg, yes. nuts. I mean, just, you guys all know this. And so I always try and tell them the importance of making connections and not centering your life around yes. food. Yes. Because in... I guess the whole world, we do everything around food, mm -hmm. and food is a big deal, but for them, I've tried to reprogram them and let them know that just because you can't have something, it doesn't change the memorable yes. moment. Yes. Amen. So, I'm going to tell you, that's huge. Yeah, isn't you look it? at behavioral change, that's so huge, because we have to move from eating to live, uh, from living to eat, to eating to, to live. To live, that's right. Is, is one of the key important things. Yeah. All right, there's another question. You want All to read right. that? So, yeah, something? so alternatives to decreasing uh, meat consumption. Hey, Sybil, what's up, girl? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, one of the things is, is that you have to make a concerted effort. One of the first things I do still say is load your, your plate with everything else first mm -hmm. is one of the key things. As in the process of doing that, you're going to get full first mm -hmm. before you get to the meat. You're yeah. going to make that side your centerpiece. As you begin that transition, I think a transition, we have to look at these vegan meats as a transition. Transition, food, right? don't sit there. So, so one thing, I'm not, I'm not throwing shade on the vegan meats, but here's the thing. It's almost the same like in, 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 in the hospital. I give people a nicotine patch to help mm. them stop smoking. Okay. The cigarettes are bad. Right. The right. Vaping's bad for you. There's no doubt about it. Right. It's not that nicotine patches are great for you. But they're better Baby than. Baby steps. They're better yes. than. Yes. Right? So true. when we're going from the meat, we start off and we move towards the, the, the vegan meats, Substitutes. substitute mm -hmm. meats, and then you transition off of those in time. So wow. Oh, I think I got a little yeah. stuck on them, guys. I need, to, I need to keep on moving. All right. Can you clarify further the difference, this is a good one, between vegan and plant-based? Oh, yeah. I love this one because here's the thing. Plant-based is vegan, but vegan is not plant-based. And here's the thing. My son always said to me, he said, Dad, Oreo cookies are vegan. Right. I said, you're right. Right? But it's not healthy. The question is... Is it health promoting right. or is it disease forming? Mm -hmm. Am I eating every action you do is either adding to your health or adding to your illness? Here's the key. It's powerful. Right? I mean, how many times have you gotten sick with a cold and one day you feel fine, the next day in the moment, you can almost remember the time mm. you're sick. Mm. You didn't just get sick in that moment. Your body was fighting in a battle. Wow. And guess what happened? Who won and who lost? Mm. Bacteria won. Right. Your body lost the fight, and so you're going in this whole mixture that's here. So everything that we do in this whole constant warfare is really about health and wellness. Mm. Is really the key. So when I look at vegan, vegan is, is huge. Vegan also includes environmental aspects. Vegan mm. also includes animal rights, which are all equally important. Yeah. From a health standpoint, 
it's really about health promotion through the foods and the power of the foods to transform mm -hmm. and put people like me out of business. Wow. They're going to still need your husband as right. a surgeon, <laughs> right? They're going to need him. But for me, you put me out of business. Wow. I should only be needed if there's a blowout on the freeway to change your tire. But my, wow. my purpose is to keep that. you from running back and forth over nails and everything else like that. Lean to the flat tire, uh -huh. right? That's I'm going to give him a... That's the goal. That is amazing, and it's so selfless, you know what I mean? Because you can easily keep all this information to yourself because you are a cardiologist <laughs> and people. But to share this with the world, guys, I am so thankful for this moment of being here. I'm going to wear my apron <laughs> proudly. I love it. Um, I love it. I feel like more equipped. I feel like I can... I can function and I can make some wiser choices in this kitchen. And every time I do, I'm going to shout you out All right, I and love send it. people because of it. Oh, we have some more questions, guys. I'm, I'm excited. This is awesome. Yeah. So name of the salt-free company, Benson Seasoning is the one that I've, I've used and so forth. It's a great one. Benson, like Benson, the TV show, B-E-N-S-O-N. Can you Benson get it on Amazon? Season. You get on Am everything on Amazon. You, yeah. can, you can buy everything on Amazon yes. for the most part. So, yeah, it's great. Deliver it to your house next day, and they have a whole wide array of different ones. And it's not the one that's potassium chloride. So you know salt is sodium chloride. It's not potassium chloride. It's just a mixture of seasonings mm -hmm. that brings the flavor out of food. Okay. It's just, it's incredible. So I love it. I sprinkle it and everything like that. So, so I have a question too for myself. <laughs> um, there's like a lot of talk around different kinds of salts to use. Yeah. Do, are, is it true that like, because I use a lot of Himalayan mm -hmm. sea salt and... Um, I recently started using gray salt, mm -hmm. but is it better to use that than just regular one with the umbrella on the box? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. Yes. I, do. I do. Well, here's the key. Salt is salt is salt. Okay. What ends up happening is in terms of your your surface area, mm -hmm. your body, your tongue may appreciate it as being more intense okay. given the size of the particle and so forth. But, still... but salt is salt is salt. And so we have to be mindful and aware because here's the key. The honest truth is that's beautiful and the wonderful work you're doing here, most people aren't cooking like this. Mm. Most people are eating out as fast food, quick mm. serve places, they're eating out of boxes, they're eating fast food from the grocery stores. Wow. Right? Because if it's in a box, you can make it by popping in the microwave, it's going to be loaded a lot of times with salt so and preservatives. Yeah, that's true. And so now when you add on top of that, adding your salt, mm -hmm. you're just layering on the harm to your body wow. without even being aware. And that's one of the key things. Once again, it's awareness. That's mm -hmm. the four A's. Mm -hmm. Awareness. Being aware aware of what you're doing day in, day out basis. Wow. I want to... Oh, go ahead. You can yeah, another so, question from Dana Brady. <laughs> <laughs> so what about tofu and are there uh, and, and the home hormones, hormones with that? You know, one of the key things what we found is that there are different types in terms of receptors, these okay. estrogen receptors. And so we know that the tofu or these these types of uh, uh, substances, it also includes your, your tempeh too as well, and edamame beans, they mm. actually block the receptor as opposed to enhancing it. That's why we see the burden of breast cancer being much lower in Asian countries. Wow. Right? And so we look at the receptors. So we do need to mix up. We need a myriad. So you brought up a great point. You said when you're making the cabbage, you said you love the color. Mm -hmm. Color is extremely important. Yeah. Our, body, our bodies, our minds were made for, our eyes were made for identifying the color for a peak ripeness mm -hmm. and gain the wide variety that's mm -hmm. there. Those things are helpful. It gives us rich in antioxidants and what we call phytonutrients. Mm -hmm. This microscopic kind of like army that we ingest that helps us fight and transforms our microbiome, mm -hmm. right? The bacteria inside of our Stop, bodies yeah. that help us kind of fight disease. So mm -hmm. it's hugely beneficial. So tofu is not evil. You do want to try and get non-GMO if you can and very uh, uh, aspects like that become important. But tofu is not, not the enemy. Tofu is okay to have. You do want to mix it up in the process. Now I want to ask Dr. Batiste, somebody else may have had this question too. Um, he has been on some documentaries. I think I was watching something and I was like, hey! <laughs> I saw him. Can you talk about that and tell us about what you're doing with um, somebody asked, what's the Slave Food Project? Yeah. Tell well, us all about that. Yeah, so if you guys haven't checked out Game Changers, Game Changers is an incredible, incredible documentary that's been out and it's aimed at our young men. 
our young men and letting them know that, guess what? Real men don't have to just eat meat. Wow. Real men actually can eat plant-based and still you can gain muscles. You can still perform at a high level mm -hmm. athletically too as well. Mm -hmm. And those are the things that are extremely important. So it's, it did a phenomenal job. It has a myriad of different celebrities and stars and athletes who are kind of showing off themselves. And, you know, I don't know why they invited me. They want me to flex, <laughs> but I was trying not to do all that on flex the camera. On, like flex that. on, flex on, you know? flex <laughs> But, uh, but anyway, somehow I made the cutting board, but that's cool. It was, it, was good, it was a good experience. But one of my passions right now is what I realized being an African-American cardiologist is the fact that there is a huge burden of health disparities in our country. Yes, and what we know is that we know that if we can narrow the gap of health disparities, we could save over $65 million wow. every single year. Wow. So the burden of that is huge. And so what I find is that even amidst this whole plant-based revolution, our own culture it's not really hugely embracing it. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I've set out to do is really begin the process of really going around and educating. And so I speak about something called slave food. Okay. Right? And it's more than a historical aspect of slave food. And one, your mind immediately goes to slave food and thinking, well, these are, these are foods that, that, that somehow the slaves ate. Right. The manipulation of nutrition for profit and for power. But when we look at today's day and age, we still are seeing the manipulation of nutrition for profit Ooh. and for power is what we're seeing. And so I want to bring that to people's attention because now what we're doing is just like you mentioned, you're teaching your kids not to have this relationship with food. Yes. All encompassing. I grew up in Compton, South Central LA. Mm -hmm. And so growing up there, there were just rows and rows of fast food. Mm -hmm. Grocery stores with produce that was not, Could not a, a top, top yes. priority. So now my brand recognition is I'm going to fast food. Mm -hmm. I'm going to convenience stores. Wow. So I tell, we tell folks, just make a change. You mm -hmm. have a choice. Well, I'm enslaved to my environment. Mm. And then now these foods that, it's a business, right? Wow. So business are making money. What happens there? Well, we want to make the, the lure of the food, mm -hmm. the addictive nature come out at you. We want you to keep coming back. I bet you can't eat just one. Right. Right? <laughs> so you keep coming back more and more. So all of a sudden now, what happens in that moment at the end of the day when you're stressed out? You've been working all day. You've been traveling. You're dealing with the kids. And you go to the grocery store. And all of a sudden in that last moment, you grab it. Yeah. Right? When you don't want to, you still get it. Mm -hmm. You're almost enslaved to this desire wow. that's here. And so it's multi multifaceted in terms of this issue of being enslaved to really our nature, mm. in terms of the foods too as well, and the impact of transitioning. Mm. It can help depression. It can help your heart. Wow. It can help your autoimmune disease. It can help wow. cancer. It can help all these different things. And so why not bring it to the masses? Absolutely. And so that, that's, that's really the goal is I want folks to understand there's history behind it. Mm. Right? I, want, I want them to understand how these environments were created, these crucibles of conflict were created mm. inside the inner city. That's deep. So that's what we're looking at doing. But thank you for asking about slavery. Yes! <laughs> and to learn more about it, they can go to... You can to go to slavefood.com. You can mm -hmm. follow me, Healthy Heart Doc. Mm -hmm. so, excuse me, slavefood.org. Um, we're on there, and we're going. We're making a tour of duty. We go, yes. we go around and we give it inside churches. I'm waiting for you to invite me to your church. Oh we'll yes. be out here in a heartbeat. Absolutely. You know? And so we love to do it. What we do is we go into churches and communities and we give our talk, mm -hmm. and then we like to follow it up with a cooking session. Yeah. Right? Yes. I get some food, let folks know an example of what they can eat. That's right. right. That's right. And so that's really the goal. I want to transform all of America, mm -hmm. but I want to transform communities that are despair yes. right that's what you know that that just touches my heart because my kids have been um saving well they've been getting allowance and i told them they have to do a project to do something great with it you can't money is just not just for you to hoard and buy yourself all these amazing things yes. you need to help somebody else and i asked them what they want to do they want to go and serve some vegan food plant-based food to the homeless oh, people here wonderful. in birmingham and I think that's awesome. I would oh, yeah. love to go into neighborhoods that they don't normally ever see this kind of stuff, see all the fresh veggies and, you know, so um, that is inspiring. And guys, um, I want to thank you all for being with us today. The only other ingredient I wanted to ask you about was coconut milk. Okay. That was in here. Okay. Yeah, okay. Recommended? Is, a, is it a goal or no? <laughs> yeah, you know, I love I, coconut milk. It's not bad. Coconut oil. Uh, let's stay away from coconut. Okay. <laughs> but the Even milk, the cold pressed? Yes. Stay away from it. Well, put it like this. 
We know that when it comes to coconut oil, mm -hmm. despite all the reports of it being beneficial for your hair and your skin, et cetera, et cetera, that it still increases the inflammatory uh, profile. For really? Events. I did not yeah. know that. So same as you know, your chicken, your turkey, and all these things increase the the inflammatory profile mm -hmm. that makes you at risk for these things. Wow! Right for cardiovascular events, that's what we want to really try and stay away from. Mm. It's just more of a, a decision. Yeah. That you say, you know what? Okay, fine. Well, I'm gonna have a little bit of coconut milk. I realize I'm going to this X restaurant, and they're gonna have a little bit in it, and you accept mm -hmm. it, right? Yeah. That's fine. If but. Having that awareness is key. Yeah. And that mindfulness that every action of what you're doing is it's getting yourself set. So when you're a little bit more mature, you can be beautiful like your mom sitting over there. <laughs> All right? That's the key. That's the key. You want to make sure that you're able, that you're mentally sound and you're able to kind of do what you need to do. Okay. So he just we just talked about the Slave Proof um, Food Project and the name of the website. If you give it one more time. Sure. Slavefood.org. O-R-G. Yes. Organization. It's, and, it's key. Thank you so much for taking time. Yo, he drove all the way here. He and his beautiful wife and sister-in-law. Thank you guys for being here with us and for sharing him with us. This is amazing and phenomenal. What you're doing is not just, you know, medicine. It is ministry. It is healing people, changing their lives. And I'm happy that Chef Mommy had a chance to host you. Yes, here. I love it. I love it. Yes. And we're gonna, so I have some food ready to go in the oven and we're going to enjoy some of this plant-based meal of the team of people who have to help us. But the only way to top this butternut squash, look at that. Look how pretty it is. Isn't the that colors. beautiful? I mean, the colors, colors the of the rainbow. Look at the, look at this. And then we got some green. And I didn't get a chance to make the, um, I have salad. I had some carrots I wanted to make. But guys, I'm going to share all these recipes with you for free. <laughs> this might be the last for free. Because <laughs> we got to stop being able to do some other yes. stuff with Chef Mommy. But the way you're going to top this butternut squash off is with some scallions fresh and some parsley. And then you can do a sprinkle of cinnamon if you dare nice. on the top. And it's delicious. It's amazing. Look, thanks for being here with us. Every time I say you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Nothing is above you. If God give it, gave it to you, you can handle it. He will be there with you every step of the way. Happy Thanksgiving. Do you have anything you want to tell everybody? Be well. Be well. Treat your body well. Give thanks yes. during this Thanksgiving season by taking care of your health. Yes. Taking care of your health. Awesome! Follow uh, my new friend <laughs> on Instagram. Blow him up. Follow him. Make sure you share this video. If you want other people to see this, you have to share it. Don't just say, oh, that was good. Like, no, share it. Share it and tell everybody else to share it. Love you guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Peace out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Got <a little> <laughs>